All right, there we go. <laughs> a little bit disconnected today. Let's get this going here. Uh, man, I ran last possible second to get here, so sorry about that. Uh, welcome to The Closing Beat, everybody. My name is Dustin Tibbetts. I'm a financial advisor, not a video editor. And so uh, I'm here today to go over the stock market, teach you a little bit about the stock market. I'll ask one small favor of you, though. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of speeches next year for the industry at all the different conferences that our industry has, financial advisors and planners and such. And I want to do the topic on, ooh, I'm sweating. I want to do the topic on uh, how the people under 45 do care about their dough. They're trying to get their dough straight. They want to learn more about investing and do the right thing. So if you do me a quick favor, hit the subscribe button. I want to be able to show data from this channel that shows people do care and are taking an active approach in their investing because all these articles you see are so frustrating where they say people don't care, they're not investing, they take their money out of their investments. Well, I want to have data to prove that wrong. Uh, I don't know that it's wrong, but let's see. So far off to a good start. So uh, that's all I ask for you. Actually, if you enjoy open houses on September 12th, we're going to do a Jazz Wealth open house live here on YouTube. Uh, to kind of show you exactly what you get if you join us here at Jazz Wealth. If you open a new account, if you transfer an account from somewhere else, I want to be able to show you uh, what the process is like because we get a lot of the same questions. So we're going to do an open house. Uh, we'll keep mentioning it that there. But that's all I have for you. If you just hit the subscribe button for me, uh, it's not like to make money or something. The whole dollar fifty that YouTube pays us each month goes towards music education anyways. That's the goal. So. Um, I appreciate that if you take a second to do that. Well, the stock market today, uh, what you see if you're joining us for the first time, uh, you can see the stock market a bit mixed today. And I'm going to say not good a lot today, so pay close attention. Uh, one of the things I want you to notice is as we work into September, we know that volatility goes up by 25%. And we know that the last two weeks of September tend to be negative if it's going to be a down month. So far, we're uh, headed in that direction, right? So uh, we're going to talk about that as we go. I want you to notice also on this chart down here at the bottom, that blue bar off to the what would be the left-hand side of the chart. Notice how it's creeping up every day. Go back and watch yesterday's video. It was a little lower. Friday's video, a little lower. We're coming out of the summertime, and now the activity, the excitement in the market is going to pick up, and it is showing by looking at that over there off to the left. You can also see the variations in the price throughout the day also uh, very, very uh, more volatile than normal. Not very volatile, just more volatile than normal. Well, we're trying something new here today. Let's see if this works. Here's the top headlines for today, September 5th. Uh, Twitter and Facebook you saw all over financial media today. It was so boring. They didn't even go to commercials. Uh, Twitter, uh, Jack, Do uh, Jack Dorsey with, um, Jack Dorsey with uh, Twitter and Sheryl Sandberg with uh, Facebook, I thought did a great job, by the way. Sheryl Sandberg is one tough cookie, man. I, I She killed it, right? So to me, uh, she handled them very well. It's just a joke, right? The whole thing is not about making anything happen. The whole thing is about all those people sitting on that committee being able to go back to their constituents and say, look, you see how hard I fought for all of this social stuff that you guys seem to care about? That's all it is, really. So that happened today. Uh, it was so boring to watch. I don't think maybe two people on the planet watched it. Uh, one of them was me. Uh, anyways, uh, tech stocks today. We're going to talk about that. Again, I'm going to say not good a lot. I can't tell you when to buy and sell unless you're one of our customers, but I'm going to say not good as my hint, so please pay attention to that. Also, Canadian trade negotiations, uh, they picked up again today. You got both sides saying we're not budging. That will stay in the news for sure. And then I already mentioned the open house that we're going to have uh, coming up on September 12th. So if you're interested in that, feel free to uh, take a look and, uh, you know, We'll see uh, how that goes, see if you enjoy that. Uh, cool, look at me trying to edit this thing. Anyways, let's go over to the charts today and take a look because you got the stock market uh, mixed, right? You know, the Dow was higher, but what does that tell you? That's only 30 stocks. We'll go through that in just a second. You can see the Dow on the screen, by the way, uh, just kind of floating near highs. The real, uh, let's talk about the S&P. The S&P continued to pull back. And remember we said, as long as the uh, markets pull back slowly, you don't really care, right? It's a normal cycle in an uptrend. Nothing goes straight up forever. It has these little fits and starts along the way. And so that's what the S&P is doing. The NASDAQ telling a completely different story. If you're heavy in the NASDAQ, you, you didn't really like what happened today. You know, it's uh, a lot of people I know are uh, heavy in the tech space right now. And that's all because of the media, right? 
You make decisions because of the media. You see tech stocks taking off, I get calls about buying tech stocks. You see Bitcoin taking off, I get calls about Bitcoin. So a lot of people are in the tech space and when those people get nervous or decide they want to uh, take a little profit, then you see that sort of quicker drop and that's because more people are participating over there and uh, that's what you had in the NASDAQ today. So the NASDAQ, the worst performer. The Dow was higher by 22, doesn't matter. S&P uh, sold off eight, that matters. The NASDAQ 100 closed down by 96, not good. Let's go through here and talk about this for a second because um, you had tech stocks lower as some of you are posting already and then you had energy stocks uh, lower. Now energy is not getting as much of the headlines because tech is exciting. Those are big names that we all know. You notice how they never really talk about smuckers on TV? They never really talk about Goodyear tires on TV. We're gonna talk about it today, but it's because it's not interesting, right? People won't watch a commercial on Bloomberg if they're talking about something nobody cares about. So they talk about Netflix. Well, Netflix was your biggest loser in the S&P 500 today. So Netflix is breaking through what's known as a support area. It had its chance to turn around and it did okay, but what happens is now that it's fallen so much today, that makes headlines. Anytime you uh, are a stock and you make headlines that your stock is falling, it causes for TV blurbs where they talk about it briefly. It causes for radio spots where they mention it in between on the commercials there. The Dow fell this much, the S&P fell this much, and Netflix fell 6%. So you hear that. You see blog posts, you see videos, you see tweets, all this stuff that makes people go, well, I must have to sell my, my positions. Maybe I should get out of my Netflix and I should get into other stuff. And so whenever a stock falls like that, everybody comes home after work and they tend to make these decisions. You would expect that to continue going forward. So Netflix lower on the day. You've got these tech names. I'm gonna go through a couple of them here because I wanna spread out. I want you to know that it's not all chip makers. It's not all software. It's not all streaming services or online tech. It's not all advertising tech. It's a bunch of different things. So if we go into like Adobe, Adobe lost 4% today, aggressively falling. Not good. Micron Technologies closing below the 200 day moving average, by the way, not good. Four and a half percent decline on the day. Uh, we're gonna talk about Red Hat. There we go. Red Hat closing below the 200 day moving average, down three and a half percent, not good. These are little things where in order for this to recover, for these stocks to erase what happened today, they need significant news events tomorrow, right? The China, China uh, trade war issue would have to be solved overnight to make these stocks recover everything that they lost today. Twitter down on the day by 6%, flirting with breaking under the 200 day moving average, not good. Now that's a little headline news right there. So I can understand them being a little lower. Facebook, I can understand being lower, but from a technical perspective, if you like using charts to trade, the technical traders are starting to eye the 150 area for uh, Facebook to fall. It's basically telling you it wants to go to 150 and today's news event's not very, very uh, good to help out. Now I thought Sheryl Sandberg did a great job, but you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. If I go through and look at some of the other stocks in the space, PayPal, look at how aggressively that sold off. What happened last time it sold off that aggressively? Did it just magically turn around and recover? No, it kept going lower again because of the headline risk. Look back over here. July 27th, you had one bad day. People came home, they go, oh my God, what happened to my PayPal? Let me email Dustin, let me call Dustin, let me go find help. They can't find it. And so then they said, well, I must have to sell my PayPal position, so they did. You got the gaming stocks, Take-Two Interactive, down 4% today, not good. We mentioned Red Hat already, uh, TripAdvisor, that's online retail, that's sort of tech, that's tech enough. Uh, down on the day, not good. Microsoft down 3% on the day. That's not bad, but of course not good. Autodesk, if you follow along with that, not good. Expedient, no, that's Expeditors. Uh, Facebook, we mentioned. Uh, Amazon down 2% on the day. These are the types of days where they also don't stop, right? We'll see more pressure. I believe we'll see more pressure on these stocks because if you're one of these stocks and you have some bad news, even if it's not that bad, you're saving that press release for days like today or maybe days like tomorrow because if everybody's looking over here and the headlines are going crazy about something over here, 
and you're a public company, you want to sneak that, uh, you want to sneak the bad news out while you can. It's going to hurt the stock price, but you want to get that bad news out. If I were a public company and I had something bad that I needed to tell the public, like sales were down or whatever, we didn't have as many customers or something, I would have that press release ready. And then when the markets were focused on Trump or uh, China or the Canada thing, then, uh, or Facebook today, first thing this morning, I'd have said, put that press release out because nobody's going to notice, right? And I say that because I, I come from a company where we did that for people. I didn't personally do that, but the company handled that for public companies, not really big public companies, but they handled that. And so it's not a conspiracy. It's not some sort of game. It's common sense, right? You want to sneak the bad news out while you can. And so that I would expect to continue to happen. Okay. Here's why I don't like what happened today as well. If we go to the winners of the day, I mentioned this a minute ago. Goodyear Tire was the best performer in the S&P 500. Goodyear Tire. Did you even know that was a public company? So you've got companies that never make the headlines now as your best performers. Nobody cares if Goodyear Tire was higher. Those are the index traders. Uh, Smuckers, we'd mentioned that a second ago. That was one of your better performers today. Nobody cares. But there's something even more that I want to teach inside of this. Let's go back to Goodyear for a second. Is Goodyear Tire a strong stock? You look at the chart, whether you were in our candlestick class last night or you've been to the other two and you're one of our customers, we've been teaching you about this. But in general, you look at that chart and you go, is that thing strong or is it a bit weak? You'd have to say that this stock is pretty weak. Goodyear Tire is not doing well right now. You'd have to say that Smuckers is pretty weak. It's just recovering a little bit from the beating that it took two weeks ago. So you can't say that's a strong stock that performed well. There are a few of them now. If I go through here, well, let me do a couple others. You got Dollar Tree. That was one of your best performers today. It's just what they call a counter trend bounce. All it is is recovering a little bit from being beaten up. That's all it is. A couple names that did well, Express Scripts, not bad, right? Broke out to new highs. There are not many like that, by the way. Harley Davidson, it's, a, it's near the top of the best performers for the S&P 500, but nobody's interested in Harley Davidson. It's beaten up, right? Kimberly Clark, uh, well, we'll get into that in a second. That's your uh, consumer staple stocks. Uh, Altera, that's a consumer staple stock as well. You see some of these stocks in the mix. So when you're going through your list and you go, wait a minute, consumer staples, consumer staples, consumer staples, should we go look at consumer staples and see if that's doing well? Anyways, that's what I wanted to point out. You've got the stocks that did well today that maybe they'll talk about for a second, but in reality, it's sort of misleading because they're not strong stocks. They're just stocks that had a good day when everybody else was looking over here. So be very, very careful about that. All right, moving on from the uh, not good stuff. <laughs> not bad. Let's talk about Walmart. So Walmart doing well. They got an upgrade today from Barclays, I believe. Yeah, they said that uh, this change into e-commerce and sort of getting efficient with their technology, they think it's going really, really well. They gave them an A plus on that. And they actually said that the uh, transition has been, quote, successful, right? So the stock was higher by about one and a third percent today. I would agree, by the way, if you happen to see, uh, Walmart's very good about telling you the changes that they're making to become better. And one of them they did, uh, it was, it was just before the last earnings announcement, I believe. They came out and they said, even on our website, they made the blue, you know, the blue in Walmart, they made that slightly more visible because they found that people's eyes would look at them, calm down a little bit, and they would stay on the page longer. That's, you wanna talk about fine tuning. They're doing some fine tuning there, so really good. Uh, in the retail space, restoration hardware, I point this one out because this one's a favorite among traders, short-term traders. Uh, this is a retail stock. They charge too much for couches and tables and stuff. Uh, but they came out uh, with their earnings. N not horrible. They missed on revenue. They missed on sales. They did up, uh, update their outlook for the year. Uh, but bottom line is uh, this company, people that buy stuff from this company, it's not that they have their dough straight, right? There's two levels, by the way. I don't know how much I say this, but you get your dough straight and then you can buy whatever you want. When you get your dough working for you, that's when you go shop at Restoration Hardware uh, and pay $450 for a lamp. So Restoration Hardware, very active over the last couple days. I would expect that to continue, not to the downside, but more volatility there. I just like to point that out. Toyota Motors, uh, down on the day. Here's your public service announcement for the day. They're recalling 192,000 uh, Priuses. 
So there, uh, from if you have a car, a Prius from 2015 to 2018, there's a wiring issue. Shares are trading at yearly lows because of it. We talked about Micron Technologies closing below the 200-day moving average. JD.com, by the way, down 10%. That's new lows on JD. The stock wouldn't be this low if the whole arrest thing in Minnesota was really not a big deal, right? I know he was released. He went back to China, the CEO, by the way. Uh, but if it was really not a big deal, we'd all be talking about something else. The stock price would settle down. There's more going on here with JD. I suspect we'll be talking about that uh, a lot more. Okay, Tesla, uh, that's gonna be three month lows today on Tesla, uh, down 3% on the day. Remember, uh, targets, analyst targets for this are around 200 to 210. So there's a, potentially a lot more downside if you ask the uh, analysts in the, in the room. They seem to think that's more downside there. And lastly, we'll talk about, well, not lastly, but we'll talk about consumer staples. Had a great day today, bouncing right off the 200 day moving average. People like to see that if you're a technical trader. And that's just people going, wait a minute, if we're gonna get a little soft here in the market, if there's gonna be a little pressure, maybe I should go put some money in consumer staples. So consumer staples having a pretty good day. And we talked about some of the stocks that uh, fared well in that. Uh, a couple other things, we got the price of oil down 1.76%. Now, since it was a holiday yesterday, you know how we say every Wednesday has been pretty volatile? The deal is the number that comes out on Wednesdays uh, is already out, right? Be, when, um, no, it comes out on Thursday, sorry. So uh, we'll get that number tomorrow. So this is one of those rare weeks because of the holiday, you'll get a number tomorrow. I expect oil to be pretty active. But in the meantime, you've got uh, companies like Halliburton, Schlumberger was out the other day with this. Uh, the stocks are lower, energy stocks lower, because they're starting to say that supply from the Permian Basin, if you follow that sort of thing, is uh, a little light, right? And so as it starts to lighten up, people are saying, uh, uh oh, maybe they're not gonna make as much money. I think they're getting hit a little too much for considering the supply that they pull out of that area. Uh, but you know, that's sort of geeky talk. Don't know if you follow that stuff. Uh, so anyways, energy stocks a little lower. The price of oil down over one and a half percent today. It had a great run, by the way, off the 200-day moving average, great run. So a little pullback here, I think is fine. Uh, and then one last thing I'll give you, Bitcoin lost 5.5% today. Goldman Sachs said, uh, you know what? We were gonna have a trading desk. Uh, they have trading desks for all kinds of different products. They were contemplating having one for cryptocurrencies. And after they did their research, spent tons of money, uh, they decided that there's just not enough volume for them to participate. Nobody cares about Bitcoin besides the little tiny retail traders that fall for all the YouTube videos of people saying they made millions on crypto. So Goldman Sachs themselves said, if there's money to make here, we want in. There's a, uh, they have a company called Marcus. It's a high interest savings account company. They do personal loans and whatnot. Uh, they saw that as a significant business for the future. Credit cards are out the window. They're moving on to personal loans. Personal loans are the new debt of the future. Anyways, Goldman Sachs knows that. They built a whole business around this. So when there's money to be made, Goldman Sachs will go make that money. They looked into cryptocurrencies. They did all their research. I'm sure they even set up a space in their buildings to get started. Then they looked at it and said, wait a minute, nobody's even trading the Bitcoin futures. Like 4,000 contracts on the day. Uh, how many contracts is trading a day? 4,585 contracts today. Goldman Sachs would sneeze more money than that. Goldman Sachs spends more money than that on just buying paper clips and whatnot. So for them, they're like, look, we tried. They announced it today. We tried, we thought we'd be interested. There's just no money there. And so for now, Goldman Sachs is out of the Bitcoin or crypto game. And because of that, uh, that takes a little bit of the wind out of what tiny little sale is left in Bitcoin there. So you saw a drop of, uh, 5.65% in that one. I feel like I talked a lot today. <laughs> okay, uh, you're about to turn 40, you care about your retirement. That's awesome, Stephen. If you hit the subscribe button, I, I wanna share that stuff when we do these conferences, I love it. Uh, Henry, you were heavy in tech. Yeah, it cost you today if you were heavy in tech. Uh, would it be wise to go UVXY for September? You gotta be ultra, ultra short term to be thinking about those leveraged VIX products. Those UVXY loses 33, uh, no, is it, is it UVXY? UVXY is gonna lose 13 cents a day for every day the market doesn't aggressively move lower, okay? So think of that as your cost. You guys focus on fees and stuff. You buy that, even if you got free commissions or whatever you do, it's gonna cost you 13 cents a day, the average over holding it for the month of September 
to carry that. If the markets do not fall, you're paying 13 cents a day essentially to hold that. Be very careful with the leverage ETFs. Quick, you gotta be in and out. You gotta time those real quick on those. That's why we don't talk about them much. Do you have a sector or area in a market that you don't believe should be in your retirement fund? Uh, Felix, gold. I don't think there's any need for gold. Gold, uh, unless you believe in hyper, hyper, hyper ridiculous inflation uh, on the horizon, there's just, for what? What's the need? Now, if you wanna go buy gold and have it and hold it and be one of those guys that puts it as a doorstop, I got a funny story about that I'll share sometime, uh, then uh, sure, you buy the gold. But to invest in your retirement accounts, it doesn't make any sense. It's, a, it's been a losing proposition unless you think inflation's about to go crazy. Uh, Henry, man, I'm sorry to hear you had a bad day. If you posted that twice, uh, it must have been a bad day for you. Sorry to hear it. Oh, man. David, Microsoft on a small discount. He likes a discount. I don't know David likes a discount. That did pull back a little bit today, right? Yeah, we, co we covered that one. That's a good drop for Microsoft. I think uh, you'll get a little more of a discount, though, if you want to be patient on that one. Uh, do you still feel the same about Fidelity Freedom Mutual Funds? It's 22. I'm 22. It's in my eye. So nothing's changed as far as uh, how they manage their freedom funds, by the way. Uh, they are still very aggressive. And so since you're 22, maybe it's not a big deal, uh, but those that choose those uh, earlier dated funds, uh, the target date funds, uh, you guys are taking a lot more risk than you should. And Fidelity owned up to it. They said they did, they, that they're taking more risk because they need to compete. They don't have anywhere else to put the money. Uh, so yeah, I, let's short answer, I still feel the same. <laughs> All right, that's all I have for you. I'm gonna let you guys get back to your uh, life. Really appreciate it. If you get a, ch a second, hit the subscribe button. I'm just gonna keep picking on you to do it. Uh, I appreciate it. And uh, if I can help you in any way, you know where to find me. Enjoy the rest of your day. watch one of our other great videos? Have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. 